G'day everyone. Well, if you're an EV enthusiast in Australia, something amazing happened yesterday. So um, sort of mid-afternoon yesterday, Tesla Australia sent out messages on email and social media announcing that the Model 3 was available for order and configuration in Australia right now. So that's uh, an incredible thing. There's been a lot of us waiting for it for a while. I think we jumped the gun, we thought a couple of weeks ago it was going to happen, and then the announcement, and, and then probably now, I was thinking maybe next week sometime, so, uh, uh, so the announcement coming out yesterday was a surprise, and it was really heartening to see so many people uh, jump on board straight away and be really enthusiastic about that. Um, if you're someone who pulled the trigger on an order uh, yesterday and configured your car, uh, if it's your first EV, welcome to the EV family, uh, particularly in Australia. Uh, the more the merrier. It's brilliant to have you on board. Uh, really wish we could be a fly on the wall for every single person who gets their very first electric vehicle. Um, uh, just to see that grin and um, how amazed you're going to be uh, is brilliant. So uh, welcome aboard. Uh, you're in for a real treat and uh, wish we could be there to share it with every single one of you. Uh, you're in for an amazing time. Um, today's video though is, about, is, is really aimed at those people who, uh, particularly in Australia, but, I, but, but it equally applies around the world, where you're a bit unsure. You're, you might be in the market for a new car or you're getting close. Uh, you've heard a bit about this EV stuff, but you've probably heard as much good as you have bad and, and, and you're just a bit unsure, you don't know, you don't know what to do. So uh, I wanted to make this video today for you uh, and, and to um, perhaps help you or, or show you where you can get some information to help you make the decision that's right for you. Um, in the EV community, we'll, you, you probably hear the term FUD around a bit, it's fear, uncertainty and doubt. And, and really what you see a lot in the mainstream media is all around creating fear and uncertainty and doubt. And I'm not gonna even begin to go into the, the reasons for that and the motivations. Uh, suffice to say that there's a lot of money tied up in this industry and um, on, probably on both sides and uh, there's some, a lot of vested interests there. Um, but you will hear these you know, stories that are probably designed to create doubt in your mind and, and they may well be doing that. So let's run through a couple of the things that you will hear most commonly. And if not, uh, this isn't meant to be a deep dive into every single one of them. It's meant to help you go and find the information for yourself. Because I think that uh, if someone can point you in the right direction and give you a little bit of a start and then do you do your own investigation, your own research, that is far more powerful than you know me or anyone else just looking down the barrel of a camera and telling you you know what my version of the truth is. Um, so one of the things you'll hear about, particularly in relation to Australian conditions, is about battery degradation. So you'll hear um, you know oh, it's hot in Australia, batteries are going to degrade too fast. You know batteries are going to cost tens of thousands of dollars to replace, and you, you know you, you're only going to get five years out of them and all that. I can categorically tell you that that's absolute rubbish, uh, particularly in relation to Teslas. And I'm and I'm speaking about, you know, whether you're going to you're thinking about buying a Model Three or a different type of uh, Tesla. Um, the truth is the the thermal management, and it's about it's it's heat with batteries is one of the large um, contributing factors to degradation, and also your behaviour. But heat's one of them. Um, Degrad the, the thermal management in the Teslas is so good that the evidence around the world is that the battery packs in modern electric vehicles, particularly Teslas, are going to last longer than the life of the car. In fact, people are putting a lot of work into working out, okay, when the car's finished, what are we going to use these batteries for? You know, and that can be in houses and businesses and all those other sorts of things. So. This idea that the you know you're going to be up for regular replacements of the battery is just rubbish. If you um, jump onto your favourite search engine and type in thermal management Tesla or battery degradation Tesla, you'll get a heap of real world statistics. People who own these cars uh, and their real experience in relation to degradation. So yes, there is some degradation. It is very minimal, and like I said, compared to the size of the battery pack. And in the main, the battery pack is going to last longer than the car will. So 
uh, that's something that hopefully uh, you can do a bit of work on degradation and I think you can answer that question really quickly. Another one you'll hear about is charging, both charging options and the time it takes to charge. So one of the things in Australia is, oh, there's, you know, there's nowhere to charge, you haven't got very, char very good charging options, it's great if you're in a city but once you get out you won't find any places. This is one where I'm happy to look down the barrel of a camera and tell you that that is rubbish. And I can tell you that because we've just finished a 15,000 kilometre circumnavigation of Australia. I can tell you uh, absolutely hand on heart that finding charging locations is not hard at all. There are plenty of them. Yes, they vary in you know whether they're uh, AC or rapid charging, so that's the speed of charge, um, but that network is only going to grow with more electric vehicles. But in terms of being able to find places to charge, there's more electrical power outlets than there are petrol stations or petrol bowsers or anything. So, so you don't need to worry about being able to find places to charge. Like I said, uh, plug shares, the app that we most commonly use in Australia, um, and there are charging locations right across Australia. There is no problem with that at all. Charging time's the other one that you hear a fair bit. Um, and it's almost like Australians have got this idea in their head that, or, or, or perhaps the outside world's view of us is that we wake up every morning and drive a thousand kilometres. The truth is Australians who live in cities and even regional areas are no different to everyone else. You're Day to day, you're probably driving, uh, I suspect it would be under 100 kilometres for most people. Um, so therefore, charging time is, I would say, uh, as close to zero as you can get it. And the reason is, for me, I go to work, I pick my children up from school on the way home, I run kids around to sport and all those sorts of things. And when my day's finished, I get home, I plug my car in. <clears throat> just like I would plug my phone in. So when I hear about charging time, my most common thing I say to people is, how long does it take your phone to charge? The truth is most people don't know because they plug their phone in either when they're doing things around the house or before they go to bed or, or whatever that is. But you're not sitting there watching your phone charge. Same thing, you're not sitting there watching your car charge. So I would say, again, I, my real world experience is I spend less time charging my car than someone would spend refueling their car uh, with a combustion engine. Um, I get home from work, I plug my car in, I wake up every morning and it's like magically my car's being refueled. Uh, so in terms of time, uh, almost zero. When you are on those longer road trips, then that's when that rapid charging network is really important and I'm really glad to say it's growing in Australia. Uh, um, hopefully we can match our, uh, our cousins in New Zealand who have done a great work on, you know, they've got fast charging almost every 70 kilometres. Um, you know, that will happen in Australia. It'll take a bit of time, but it'll happen. Um, on those road trips, uh, again, from my experience circumnavigating Australia, where you've got rapid charging, Oftentimes the car's waiting for you, you're not waiting for the car. So by the time you've you know, taken a bathroom break and got a coffee and, or had a meal or all those sorts of things, the car's charging while you're doing that. It's different to charging a combustion engine where you're standing there fueling, going in and paying and then go and do something else. So your car's charging or refueling, if you think about it like that, while you're doing something else. So again, you know, I think for 99% of people, uh, people's day-to-day -day stuff, you're going to get home from work you're gonna, or whatever it is you do, and you're going to plug your car in, and in the morning it'll be ready to go again. Another one you might hear a little bit is about cost. So more upfront cost of the vehicle and things like resale value and all those sorts of things. I would say on that, like the prices, and um, I think uh, from memory, and if I get this wrong, I'll, I'll put the, the, right, uh, the right numbers up. I think the, uh, the configurator for Australia for the Model 3, 66,000 for the performance version and 80, uh, sorry, for the, um, for the standard range version and, um, and 85,000 I think it was for the performance uh, version. Um, yes, that's, that might be a little bit more than people are uh, uh, used to paying for a car. Um, there's a channel, uh, uh, Teslanomics, uh, Ben Sullins uh, in the US, 
So you might have to do some conversions, but the, the, the maths stays the same. What you need to have a look at is the total cost of ownership or the whole of life cost uh, of a vehicle. So if you factor in you know, a quarter of the running costs, uh, almost zero servicing, um, you know, brake pads that w will almost last forever, all those sorts of things. Uh, if you have a look at that whole of life cost of a vehicle, I think already at those prices in Australia, very, very competitive with a combustion engine car, uh, particularly on the, on the recharging. If you can find somewhere to charge where, uh, you know, I've got a few spots around Darwin that are free to charge for me, um, the running costs of my vehicle are n absolutely negligible uh, compared to going and putting in, um, you know, fuel, uh, which at the moment I think is running maybe hundred uh, sorry dollar fifty or something like that or more uh, per litre. So again, do some do some work on that, uh, do some investigation yourself on that. Like I said, whole of life cost or total cost of ownership. Uh, and I can really recommend, like I said, there's a Tesla Nomics. Uh, ben Sullins has got a channel, does some great work on really understanding uh, the maths of owning uh, an electric vehicle. Um, he also has got some stuff there on resale value. So that's, uh, again, something you want to have a look at. But, but all of the evidence so far is that the resale value of electric vehicles, they, they definitely hold their resale value. Um, Another one you will hear uh, sometimes in Australia, and I've heard it myself, and you know now that I've got a bit of personal evidence, it makes it easier, but the one you hear a bit is, oh, you look, electric vehicles are great in Europe because they don't have to drive very far. In Australia, our distances are so vast, they, they're not going to work over here. Again, like I said earlier, the majority of your trips are actually going to be sort of your daily commute, and they're not very vast distances at all. If you're very, uh, you know, if you're realistic about that. If you, if, if you sit down and look at that yourself, you'll realise that you're not actually driving vast distances every day. Um, but ha having done uh, like just under 15,000 kilometres, uh, and we did that in about 18 and a half driving days. So I can tell you that electric vehicles can do vast distances. They can do very long distances in a day. Um, you know, we had 1,000 kilometre uh, days plus a number of those uh, we got from Brisbane to Darwin in three and a half days that is absolutely comparable with um, what a combustion engine car would do so that whole distance and range thing again it's an absolute nonsense uh, but you can either take my word for it or you can do a little bit of research um, so yeah look hopefully that helps you if you're thinking if you if you're sort of teetering on the edge and you're thinking would I you know, as an EV for me, um, as someone who's owned an electric vehicle in Australia now for a bit over a year, and in a in a in a sort of regional area, have absolutely no regrets. It is a great car. It does everything we need, including long road trips and all those sorts of things. And I think that um, EVs are as good in Australia as they are everywhere else. And and um, I would thoroughly recommend them. Do your do your own homework. Go and have a test drive if you can. But but. There is absolutely no issue with owning an EV in Australia. We're the same as the rest of the world. They're great cars everywhere, including in Australia. Um, lastly, now that you can configure a Tesla here, uh, you can use a referral code and you get some free supercharging and things like that. Now, this is not just a plug for us. So if you want to use our referral code, absolutely, uh, in the description of this video, it's there and you can click on it. Um, but there's also a site that's been set up and I'll put a link to it here on the screen uh, and that's got um, referral codes from other Australians who are promoting EVs and doing that work so if you want to go and have a look for someone else's referral code that's just as great I'll put a link to the um, link to the uh, site here on the screen and you can go and have a look and find a referral code um, again if you're thinking of joining the EV community I thoroughly recommend it it's a great community um, uh, people are very warm, very embracing, and we would love to have even more of you join us in the EV community here in Australia. All right, look, I hope you found that useful. Uh, as usual, thanks very much for watching. We really appreciate the support. Uh, if you don't subscribe to our channel already, consider subscribing. There's a button here somewhere on the screen that you can do that. Um, 
Everyone who's bought a new EV, welcome to the family. Brilliant to have you aboard. Great to be able to order Teslas now, uh, the Model 3 in Australia, and really look forward to seeing and hearing more about um, those cars on the road and more and more people uh, embracing EVs. Uh, until next time, safe EV travels and thanks for watching.